This is a really important part when it comes to plumbing, especially these external pumps. This and this. Without those, you ain't getting this thing running. You can get a feel for how cool this beach is now. I mean, how awesome does that look? So cool going down to where we put those steps in this morning. <laughs> of course, it's raining again. Hey everybody, it's Jack from Atlantis Water Gardens. We are back here for part three of this awesome recreation pond in Piles Grove, New Jersey. If you haven't seen how we got to this point, click on the link right here. It'll take you back to episode one. Get yourself up to speed because it is really turning out awesome. We've got ourselves about a 20 by 40 foot pond. We've got a beach entrance on this side. This is gonna get some flagstone over here that's gonna meet right up to the beach, as well as a fire pit area, which cantilevers out over the pond. In there, we've got a retaining wall that's actually gonna be holding up that patio, nice clean look, right down to four feet in front of it, and then we drop down to five feet at the very bottom. We've got a little bit of rock work left to do here, just a couple steppers that are coming up into the beach area. We can close that up. We've got a spot over here that just needs some small rock work in front of where our intake base skimmer is. And then we can go ahead and gravel everything. We are using a 3 ace P stone on this, which is gonna be a really smooth, small river stone, easy on the feet. I'm not gonna be using sand here. I've had some mixed reviews with sand. So we're gonna go with the pea gravel because I know it works in all these horizontal surfaces. So we've got pea gravel here, there, and down the bottom. Along with that, we'll be buttoning up a lot of the outside edges. I wanna get everything closed up here which means we're gonna have some wiring to do for our lighting. We've got some aeration lines over there. Just all that outside stuff that can bring this all together. Because what's happening shortly is we're gonna wash this pond down and bring in truckloads of water to fill her up. And you know that's always exciting because that means we're close, close to finishing and actually getting to take a dip in this thing. Because it's been hot out. I'm excited to get in this pond when it's all up and running with those beautiful cascading waterfalls, big wetland filter, lots of interactive areas with these huge boulders in here. We're starting out day seven. have water and that's a really good feeling all of our 3a stone is in our beach areas our horizontal shelves and in the bottom and now we've got it all washed down and the pond is actually filling we're gonna put about a foot and a half to two feet of water in this pond because what's gonna happen is when those guys come with those big water trucks they're gonna drop their four inch hoses in and just start pumping if we didn't have any water in there, it would be blasting that gravel, knocking it all over the place. So if you get a good amount of water in, it could just go into the pool of water, doesn't disturb the bottom, and this way it's not gonna muck things up or shove all that gravel around. You can get a feel for how cool this beach is now. I mean, how awesome does that look? So cool going down to where we put those steps in this morning. Check out this informal staircase we did going from this lower section up into the beach. That's gonna be so awesome. Intake. Just looks great. Love the way this turned out. We actually were able to get our plumbing started. I got two three inch lines going into where the vaults are. From here, there'll be two three inch check valves in there and then we'll plumb down to the bottom with T's. This is gonna be using external pumps. We have two EXT 12,000 pumps running the system. So we've gotta draw the water from in here. We wanna use hard pipe because on suction, you could actually collapse flexible pipe. So use hard pipe to avoid that. Now, the reason we're putting check valves in here is because we have to actually prime these pumps. I'll get into that tomorrow, but you can kind of see what the inner workings look like. We're bringing our pipes out, stepping up, and we're getting above our water line in the pond. What I'm gonna do tomorrow, actually, is I'm gonna put a few blocks underneath there, four inches above water. This way, there's no chance of any settling because those pipes can get heavy when they're vibrating and they're full of water. I'm super happy with where we're at. 
this is the end of day seven. So seven days to get to this point. Tomorrow we will have water in here. We might actually get to go do a little bit of swimming tomorrow, which would be cool because it is smoking hot out here. My two boys kicked major butt today. It was just the three of us. Tomorrow we got Bowley, Brennan, and Drew showing up. So we're gonna go at it with the full crew and really make some progress. I hope to be digging that wetland tomorrow. We'll show you what that's all about. See you tomorrow. Today is a big production day. And when I say production, I mean we're gonna get a lot done. I've got the whole crew here. Bowley, Brennan, and Drew showed up this morning. They're gonna get rocking on carving out where this flagstone patio is gonna be. Back in here, we've got a really nice pavilion. Out of there, we're gonna have a walkway made out of flagging coming out here to meet the pond. So we're gonna break off to the left here, go over to our beach. Wanna have a planting area in between. And then off on the right is gonna be a big circular fire pit. We'll be cutting in that flagstone around some of the boulders that we laid inside here already. That's gonna give it a really nice look. And we're also gonna be cantilevering over this wall about an inch or so, just giving the really super clean edge. While they get that prepped, we're gonna get rolling on the waterfall. See Bowley's back there? Well, he was back there. We gotta finish framing out that right side right over here, get in some frame rocks. Then we can pull that liner back and dig for our constructed wetland filter. That wetland filter is what's gonna keep this water quality perfect. As we get into it, I'll show you some of the parts and pieces that go into it and how we actually construct this thing. And don't forget today, we got the water trucks coming. So this will be full of water today. Super excited, let's go. Let's talk pumps. These are the Aquascape EXT 12,000 inline pumps. These are made specifically for these rec style ponds. What I love about these is they are super quiet. They push good water and you don't hear them. Most pool pumps, you'll hear that whining or that grinding sound. These things, you'd be standing right next to them not even know that they're running, except for hearing the water go through the pipes. So what we've got to look at is we're gonna be pouring up a concrete pad in the vicinity of where our pump hole is. So. What I'm gonna do is lay these out the way I want them, and they'll take a measurement and see what I'm gonna need for my pad. I'm probably gonna pour like a three by three or four by four pad, giving us enough room to actually put these pumps on and have room for the plumbing. Now, speaking of plumbing, there's a couple of parts to this pump. I'm not gonna go through the whole assembly of it, but so we've got these flanges that actually attach to the pump itself. We've got one that goes on the suction side, and there's a smaller one, a two inch, that goes on the discharge side. These have a piece of rubber EPDM gasket that actually goes in between, and then it's bolted together with bolts and nuts, tightening things up and making it waterproof. They've got slip fittings on them so we can actually glue into these, which is what we're going to be doing. We're gonna be bringing our three inch suction lines into the front of these pumps. Then from there, we're gonna discharge. Now at the top, we've got a street 90, which is just a fitting that glues right into the slip end of the flange. And then after that, this is probably one of the more important pieces. This is a T with a threaded top on it. So this is gonna go here with the top that actually threads in. So we'll put some silicone or some Teflon tape around this to make sure it stays watertight. But what this is gonna do is once we're installed, this is our discharge pipe. We're gonna have our feed line that comes from the vaults going all the way back to the vaults. And inside the vaults, there's gonna be something called a check valve, which this is a check valve here. So you hear that noise? There's a flapper, you can see that inside there. So what happens is when the water gets pulled through, this flapper gets pulled open it's drawing all that water out. And when it, the pump stops, it actually, the water weight will push that flapper back closed, essentially holding the water in the line. The reason that's important for this is because we're gonna take and fill up with a garden hose inside here. We need to prime this pump. So when we do that, we put the garden hose in, it's gonna go through all this plumbing all the way back to the pump vault 
and it's gonna hit our check valve that's closed. So that's gonna allow us to flood all that plumbing all the way up to here. So when we're, when we're done, there should be water kind of coming out of this thing. Then we go ahead and put our cap back on and fire it up. What that's gonna do is all that water in the line is gonna allow the pump to create a vacuum and pull the water out of the pond, send it up to the line to feed our jets, our wetlands, our waterfalls, all that kind of stuff. So that's the important part right here. This is a really important part when it comes to plumbing, especially these external pumps. This and this. Without those, you ain't getting this thing running. That's all I got for pumps. I'll tell you something that always gives me just a little bit of anxiety showing up the next day after the pond is filled which by the way looks fantastic it's checking to see that the water level hasn't dropped and this morning this thing is exactly where it was yesterday now of course we take all the right steps we make all the precautions with all the rock pad and everything to make sure we don't get any problems with the liner but there's still always that little bit of doubt that creeps in that next morning when you're driving in like oh man i hope this thing is in the same spot we left it in and it is it feels good and so now that that's out of the way the pond is full right to the tippy top we can get working on finishing this thing yesterday we got the pad poured for where our pumps are going to sit our plumbing can get hooked up the electrician's actually here to hook that up which is great one more thing in the right direction our wetland filter is built we've got our aqua blocks in there our snorkel and centipede are in we've got our different layers of rock and gravel at this point now we can start putting our boulders in that are going to give it the shape up top then we can go ahead and tie in the rest of this waterfall which is really what i want to accomplish today i want to see all this done so that really all that's left is ancillary stuff like hooking up the aerator getting the lighting done buttoning up the edges and getting that patio finished i'm thinking by end of day tomorrow we are cleaning up and out of here i can't tell you how excited i am for this thing to finally be done and turned on and i'm sure you are too let's get it rolling We are trying, <laughs> of course it's raining again, but we made great strides here. We are so, so close to finishing. The waterfall is pretty much done. We're just dropping some more boulders up in the wetland filter. We've got a little bit of plumbing to do for the pump. This flagstone patio is turning out awesome. Come on back next video. We are gonna finish this, fire it up, maybe even go for a swim. Hit that subscribe button, see you on the next one.